What's up there YouTubers and fellow riders, Kim is back at it again in the garage cooking up another DIY for you. Today we're going to be removing and replacing the OEM stock stabilizer for the handlebars with this one that I purchased from a yard. Stay tuned. Alright guys, so before we begin on the repair process, um, let's talk about the importance of the steering stabilizer. The steering stabilizer controls the uh, movement of the handlebars from left to right and why is this important well if you guys I'm sure you have caught in those videos on YouTube where people are doing willies or they just happen to catch a pothole at the wrong time wrong place and the wheel came off the ground and suddenly caught on on the on the pavement and all of a sudden you get that tank slapper now those tank slappers are nasty you know that's not something you want to encounter i myself have never encountered one i did have a buddy who just recently went down uh he caught a tank slapper after catching a, a groove in the in the concrete and uh caused his front to come up and, and catch real quick and it threw him off the bike in in less than two seconds he suffered some severe road rash on his hip his his thigh his calf and his wrist even though he was fully geared up aside from his pants um, he was wearing a cargo pants and shredded his pants within two seconds of his slide it's completely scraped away along with the skin so it's very important that if you're having issues with your steering stabilizer that you go ahead and correct that as soon as possible whether it be you but purchase the aftermarket one that goes here, the OEM one that goes in the backside down here, or the one that connects right here. There are three different models for that for this, and uh, you can find those on eBay all day long. Just make sure you purchase from a reputable uh, dealer. Uh, just recently, this started occurring where I started to when I'm in a turn or like from a stop and then or a slow row, and I go and turn my my bars in the right direction. The I get a stiffness up to a point and all of a sudden it feels like something gave out and the bars just couldn't suddenly shift over real quick and this kind of throws you off balance now this is very unsafe and um, steering issues can be a, a couple of things um, first we have the head bearings which are located up up in here and we got one up, uh, a set up on top and a set on the bottom and uh, if you are experiencing an issue or you're hearing a clicking somewhere inside there, that's usually going to be a head bearing issue and that requires full dismantle of the front end and removal of the triple tree and that's a process in itself. So I'm hoping that this is not my issue. Another possible cause for steering issues could be worn out tires. Now these tires do have some life on them, some, some good tread on them and um, while I do have a pattern going on here, I'm pretty sure that's not exactly what I'm feeling. I mean, I've had tires wear almost all the way completely down and uh, I would still not have a steering issue. Uh, third and possible thing that could be uh, a problem with steering issues is the steering stabilizer. Now you might, this is the OEM one. It's located down here in the bottom of the uh, triple tree area. And um, you might see, you might have some aftermarket ones that either mount to here or go across here. But uh, for now, uh, what I have here is the OEM one. Now, my bike has probably over about 120, 130,000 miles on it. And this has never been serviced or replaced. So I'm going to say that's that's going to be my issue right now. And what I've done is I purchased uh, an aftermarket one. Well, actually not aftermarket. I have replaced one from a yard or purchased one from a yard which is currently over here and uh, it's in pretty good condition um, so you can see we have no leaks here oh, it looks really good and the movement when you slide this in here is nice and uh, stiff silky smooth and I don't get no fail points in here at all now, if we look inside here um, there's some OEM there's some rings in here some rubberized rings but uh, maybe when I replace this one or replace the one that's in the bike right now out with this one I'll go ahead and dismantle that for you guys so you guys can take a look but uh, in the Suzuki book when it says or the Suzuki manual the Bible when it says uh, you're having issues with your steering stabilizer shock to go ahead and replace it uh, I kind of searched online there are no bushing kits for this you know to replace it as you can see that's looks like it's totally removable I've never opened one up before uh, to tell you that if, if it is possible or not but I have seen a couple of YouTube videos where they actually go and remove this boat 
and replace the fluid inside here or the oil um, that goes inside there but uh, that's nothing not, not something I'm gonna want to do today I just want to go ahead and replace this I got this part off of eBay I'll put that up right here for you guys and um, this wasn't too bad I think it would cost me like 12 12 to 15 dollars for this replacement shock which is pretty good uh, good, 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 ugh, good price to play pay for um, a part now uh, they are aftermarket ones that mount to the top of the triple tree up in this area up here um, I kind of wanted to keep it OEM I didn't want anything in the way right here anything moving back and forth I do ride with a tank bag to and from work so um, I don't want anything cluttering up this area right here and plus I have other plans to make other things that go up here such as switches and whatnot so um, let's go ahead and take a look at the current steering stabilizer give me a second All right, so I got my bars kicked out to the left right here so you can get a good view of the left side of the bike, as we can see. And um, inside here is my steering stabilizer. Now, if we go ahead and take a look, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer, you can see some oil buildup down in there. And it's actually fresh. It's, uh, I don't want to touch it, but let me see. It's actually fresh. And... Um, this is what I believe is causing my issue. The uh, the bushings inside, the rubber bushings inside have, have gone out and some fluid is now leaking out. And I'm pretty sure this is going to be the cause. And as you can see, all the fluid on the top end up here. So today we're going to go ahead and replace that. Uh, we got one bolt there that we need to take out. And we got another one that ties down right here. And uh, I'll get the sizes for you in a minute when we get started with this repair. But um, as you can see, that uh, yeah, that guy's pretty much worn out, and it's time for a replacement. So stay tuned. I will get back to you. All right, guys. So for reference sake, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the OEM service manual here, and we can see uh, the triple clamp and or the triple tree. And we can see our steering stabilizer or steering dampener as the book refers to it. We got two bolts that we need to remove, one here and one here. And the uh, mounting brackets or points are located on the bottom triple clamp here and here. Now, if we take a look at this book, I'm going to zoom in real quick. The book talks about the inspection of the steering stabilizer or the steering dampener. But you're going to also notice that it does not make reference to servicing the steering dampener at all okay they, they do not want you to go ahead and uh, service the the fluid inside here and they show you in here if you have any issues with this that they do not want you to uh, replace any bushings repair in any way possible um, they want you to go ahead and replace it and I highly suggest you do the same as well. So uh, just for your references, here are the torque specifications for each. And you can push pause anytime you want if you need these, these numbers down at all. And there we go. Let's get started. Okay, so let's talk about a few parts that we need to remove in order to get to the steering stabilizer or steering dampener. Now, as you can see down there, there is a piece of plastic down there that we need to get rid of, which is this plastic piece right here. It's actually a cover that protects from dirt and debris flying up right here. We need to remove that. And uh, if we take a look on the inside right here, you're going to notice that my fairing on this side, the inside plastic, is going to get in my way right there. And so we're going to go ahead and remove the left side fairing. And um, I'm not going to show you that process, and there's no need for that. It's pretty self-explanatory. Hang tight while I go ahead and remove these pieces. All right, guys, so I got the right side fairing off, and we're going to go ahead and take a look in here. Here's your wiring harness that's usually attached here. Don't mind all the zip ties. Uh, over time, these things break, and you got to make your own modifications here in order for make, to make it work. But if we take a look inside right here, you can see the bolt for the, for the uh, dampener right here. Uh, which mounts to the triple clamp as we saw in the book and uh, here's the plastic shroud that you need to remove this is going to get in your way and in order to remove this we are going to have two 10 millimeter bolts uh, that we need to re remove one is here and the other one is right here and i've already had got those loose and they'll be back in them out right now so i can remove this whole plastic piece down here all right push and pause 
All right, guys, so I went ahead and removed the air ducting right here. And uh, if you don't know how to do that, it's just a real a simple uh, pop grommet right here. Or mine's was at least as a pop grommet. And you're just going to go ahead and back the ducking out. So you can see it's right there. Um, I got my light in there. but uh, And then snip off uh, the harness connectors here so that you can expose the uh, stabilizer right here. Now, uh, we're going to use an open-end wrench. This is a 12 millimeter. We're also going to use a 12 millimeter socket. And that's because we have uh, two bolts up here that we need to, one we need to hold on to, and the other while we release. The bolt that's down here that actually removes uh, the other part of the steer steering stabilizer mounting point, that's gonna be a five millimeter um, hex in. I'm using a, a ball socket in style wrench to get mine off. Stick that up in there and unloosen it. So hang tight while I go ahead and remove that. We got the bolt finally loose as you can see it's right there and we're just gonna go ahead and drop up lift this up here sorry for the shakiness of the camera and go ahead and drop it out right here and remove our stabilizer all right guys so we're back at the table I got the uh, dampener out and we're gonna go ahead and do an inspection of the dampener the old one and comparison to the new one and uh, so let's go ahead and remove this if yours if your uh, replacement bushing when you purchase it from the yard or your replacement uh, dampener when you replace it from the yard didn't come with any of these rubber bushings here be sure to save them um, so we go ahead and take the bolt out there's the bolt that we need had to remove and here's the little rubber bushing so since I don't have any other ones I'm gonna have to make do with what I have here as you can see this one's already ripped and torn so probably not a good idea to use one uh, use the same one but it's all I have at the moment so um, maybe later on down the line I'll go ahead and replace that we got one on the bottom as well another nylon bushing here and um, maybe I can even go down to Aces Hardware and actually pick one of these up before I actually install it but uh, we'll see we'll see just yet so I'm gonna move that off to the side you can see everything's all greasy and um, Let's go ahead and take a look at the, the functionality of this. Now, it's supposed to be a sliding motion back and forth right here, nice and smooth. Uh, nothing's supposed to give or anything like that. So if we go ahead and take a look at it, yep. There's that movement that I was feeling, that sudden give. Now it gets stiff. Come back over here, stiff. Go back in this direction, too fast. Let's go ahead and take a look at this one. We got a nice smooth motion all the way through. And nothing gives. So that's gonna go ahead and be my issue right there. Problem resolved. So let's go ahead and get that new one in there. Now, if inspecting yours, you happen to see any type of grease or anything coming out of here. I mean, technically you should be lubing this right here for the uh, nice smooth action, but uh, the book says Suzuki grease, whatever that is, maybe possibly white lithium would work. But um, I can go ahead and see that we have all kinds of grease build up right here. So. I could already tell that this was going to be my issue so all right i'm gonna go ahead and get that in there uh, i'm gonna save you guys the trouble of watching me get this in there let's go ahead and do things in reverse order and you should have no no issue uh, that's going to be it for this video guys go ahead and like subscribe and don't forget to share um, and if you got any comments or you need any assistance in with this or where I purchased it or what you should buy go ahead and leave something down in the comments below and I'm more than happy to help you guys out as always I'm the chemist and I will see you next problem